In this video, we're going to continue talking about the sensitivity report as produced by the solver in Microsoft Excel. So we have already built out our solution and if you need to revisit um, building this solution, you can do so in a previous video. Um, but for the sake of this video, we're going to talk about the uh, interpretation of the constraints within our sensitivity analysis. So within our constraints, we notice a few things. So we notice something called a shadow price. And when we look at shadow prices, uh, shadow prices are valuable for decision makers and managers because they provide insight into the economic interpretation of constraints um, specifically related to linear programming problems. So you might look at this and they would help you answer questions like how much would I be willing to pay for additional resources? So in this scenario, how much as a manager would you be willing to pay per additional ton of material one, material two, material three, uh, respectively? They might also help you answer questions in another way of looking at this is what is the impact on the profit if I have more or less of a specific resource? So in this case, um, you know, if you had more of material one, would you make more profit? Or if you had less of material three, would you make less profit? Um, in other ways, looking at shadow prices, they tell us how much the optimal solutions objective value would change if we were to increase or decrease the resources available for a particular constraint. Now, typically when the shadow price is positive, and in this case, both the shadow prices for material one and material three are positive. Um, so if the, if the shadow price is positive for a constraint, it means that increasing the right hand side or the amount of resources or materials that you have available uh, would result in an increase of the objective value. Okay, so previously we established that our objective value or our maximum profit for this particular solution was $1,600. So if we were to increase the right hand side or the amount of material available for material one, we would expect to see an increase in profit of $33.33 per ton of material one and we would expect to see an increase in profit of $44.44 uh, per ton of additional material three. Now, importantly, this is not without restriction. So we see that we have an allowable increase and an allowable decrease. So this is how much we're able to increase the right-hand side and how much we're able to decrease the right-hand side while our shadow price remains valid. An increase or decrease beyond these ranges would result in an invalid shadow price and we'd have to rerun solver to explore the effects. Um, but no less, so long as that we're increasing or decreasing within the allowable ranges, um, we can determine its effect on our objective value. So in other words, of, another way of looking at this is saying that um, for material one, um, we could have 14 less than or equal to, um, we'll just say material one less than or equal to 21.5. Where did those variables come from? Or where did these values come from? Well, 20 minus six is 14 and 20 plus 1.5 is 21 and a half. For material two, We'll come back to this in a second. We'll notice that the shadow price is zero, but let's ignore that for a second. Let's look at the constraint on the right-hand side, so five tons, and we see an allowable increase of one e to the plus 30. Effectively, this is 10 to the power of 30, which is a very, very large number. Um, we effectively can treat this as uh, infinite. So what we're saying is that the allowable decrease is no more than one ton. So five minus one is four. So four is less than or equal to M2, right? 
which is you know less than or equal to infinity. But we don't need to write that. We'll just say at four is great less than or equal to m2. And then for m3, well, we see an allowable increase of nine and an allowable decrease of 2.25. So 21 minus 2.25 is 18.75, less than or equal to m3, less than or equal to 21 plus nine, which is 30. Okay, so this is the ranges of our allowable increase and allowable decrease of each specific material. So to the extent that our shadow price will remain valid. So let's walk through an example. So let's say we were to increase. So let's say we we're to increase the right hand side by one ton. doesn't like that I did that. So we'll just put a comma there just to throw off Excel. But we'll say that we we'll increase the right hand side by one ton. Well, <clears throat> one is less than or equal to uh, 1.5, which is our allowable increase. Right, and let me just back this up just a little bit so you can see it. So one is less than or equal to our allowable increase. To that extent, our shadow price will remain valid. So such that our initial optimum, optimal value or maximum profit was 1600. We could say 1600 plus 33.33 times one. So equals 1600 plus 33.33 times one. Well, we would expect to make an additional $33.33 per additional ton of material one. So if we increase the right-hand side from 20 to 21, we would see a new profit of $1,633.33. So we'll just label this uh, increase M1 plus one ton, All right? Alternatively, what if we were to decrease the amount of uh, material one available? So if we were to decrease our constraint on our right-hand side, so if we were to say um, M1 minus, let's say three tons, so our new constraint would be 17 tons. Well, three is less than or equal to, is less than our allowable decrease of six. So because three is less than or equal to allowable decrease of six, then our shadow price remains valid. So if we were to decrease M1 by minus three tons. Well, this is going to equal to 1600 plus our shadow price of 33.33 times, in this case, we're decreasing our right-hand side, so minus three. So what this is gonna equal is equal to 1600 plus our shadow price times negative three in this case, we're going to lose $100 in profit if we were to decrease our right-hand side from 20 to 17. Okay. Now, we can do, look at the same thing for our other variables. So we could look at what would happen if we were to increase the amount of material three from let's say let's say increase uh, m3 by plus five tons so since uh, five is less than or equal to the allowable increase of nine our shadow price will remain valid 
So if we were to say increase M3 plus five tons, well, this is going to equal to 1600 plus our shadow price of 44.44 times our increase of five, which is then equal to 1600 plus our shadow price times five. So we see an increase of profit of $222. That's 1822.22 minus 1600. So we see an increase of $222 um, by increasing the amount of material three from 21 tons to uh, 26 tons. Now, what if we wanted to decrease the amount of material three? So let's say we wanted to decrease the amount of material three, and let's say we wanted to decrease M3 by negative three tons. Well, to the extent that since three is greater than the allowable decrease of 2.25, our shadow price is invalid, okay? So when our uh, change is greater than either our allowable increase or allowable decrease, our shadow price becomes invalid and we'd have to rerun solver. So in this case, if we wanted to decrease material three by three tons since our allowable decrease is 2.25, three is greater than our allowable decrease of 2.25. So consequently, our shadow price is invalid and we have no way of inferring anything more other than that it's an invalid um, shadow price so we'd have to rerun solver if we wanted to make that adjudication now perhaps we wanted to say it was within bounds so let's say we're going to say decrease m3 by negative two tons well since two is less than or equal to our allowable decrease of 2.25 then our uh, then our shadow price is valid so if we were to decrease m3 by less than by negative uh, two tons well this is going to be 1600 plus our shadow price 44.44 times in this case we're decreasing it by negative two which equals 1600 plus our shadow price multiplied by negative two, which is equal to $1,511.11. Really importantly, that we try not to change the uh, positives and negatives of our shadow price. Just leave your shadow prices the same as they appear in your Excel and instead ensure that you put the uh, corresponding negative numbers if you're representing a decrease in the right hand side constraint. This will help th keep things straight for you if you find a way that is constant. So in this case, keeping our shadow price as reported and reporting our decreases or increases respectively by positives and negative numbers, um, this will help keep things straight. Now finally, let's just bring our attention here to material two because material two has a shadow price of zero. Now, notice uh, a few things here. Um, first of all, we see that the final value is four and our right-hand side constraint is five, suggesting that there is material left over or that this resource is non-binding or that there is slack, right? And we know that there's uh, both slack and that it's non-binding. So we had a slack of one ton of material two and that it was non-binding. That was told to us in our answer report. We also see that in our solver solution, that's four is less than or equal to five. So when we have a non-binding uh, constraint, our shadow price is zero, meaning that adding more of this particular resource, so in this case, if we were to add more uh, material two, it would not have an impact on our profit. So we could not make more profit simply by adding more material too, right? We already had slack, so adding more of material two will not 
maximize our profit in this scenario, right? We already talked about that you cannot decrease material to by more than one ton. But again, notice that even if we decreased our material to by one ton, our shadow price is zero. So it's not going to have an effect on our maximum profit. In other words, our maximum profit would stay the same at $1,600. Now keep in mind, all the changes that we've discussed here in this video are about changing one variable at a time. Um, so there are instances where you may seek to change two constraints at a time, um, but we'll cover that in another video. So for now, this is only about the allowable increases and decreases for changing one constraint. So changing the constraint for the right-hand side for one variable at a time. Uh, we'll, cover covering, we'll cover changing multiple variables in another video, but that will do it for this video. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped to make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.